Now we're at the fourth part of the, our reflections, the gospel. Now, because as I mentioned, the gospel account, narrative, is vocation. That's why we took Samuel. That's why we took the psalm. We, you know, I, I love you. I re, I'll tell the whole world about you because of what you've done for me. You see? And then, be faithful to your vocation in Corinthians. And this one fits. It doesn't always fit because the Pauline level of the readings is following its own rhythm. The first reading and the gospel are meant to enlighten one another. I think I've said that lots before. Okay. So, after the prologue in the Gospel of John, which ends at verse 18 of chapter 1, there is a whole series of uh, confrontations with John the Baptist in which he bears witness to Christ. And there are all sorts of titles given to the Lord in that period there. Um, you see, the um, and so then... Uh, he tells them, the people who have come out from Jerusalem, you see, there's one you don't, you, won't, you don't recognize, but I'm not worthy to untie the straps of his sandals. Now, this happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Now, the first one uh, is more a testimony. The first time that John sees Jesus... The second one is the one we have for our text today. But I'm going to read a bit of the first one. The next day, by the way, next day, next day, next day, is setting us up for something. And when we do the, the Cana, whenever we do that in, in this series here, we've already done it on that. Uh, I'll explain next days. Right now, let's leave them. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So this is all now, you see, uh, John's witness from verse, uh, uh, where we are now, uh, you see, Behold the Lamb of God. What's that mean? Is that the Paschal Lamb? What Lamb of God is this? This is John the mystic who's been instructed by the Holy Spirit and he's pointing that is the sacrificial victim who takes away, uh, you see, uh, the sin of the world is what he has already said. Uh, but now he says, you see, again, uh, the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, a man coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he has existed before me. He existed forever. And it goes on. Now, that's the uh, first time that John catches sight. One of the scholars, Michel de Gueux, a friend of mine, uh, wrote an article. He discovered that every time in the Gospel of John you have see, say. It's the declaration of a vocation. See, say. He's here declaring Jesus' vocation. You see? And you'll find others. He saw Nathaniel and he said, and then at the cross, he saw the mother and he said, he saw the disciple and he said, and he declared their vocation. Behold your mother, behold your, your son. A uh, very, very beautiful article quoted by most people when they deal with this. Okay. The next day, that's our day now, 35. He was there again with two of his disciples and he watched same word in Greek. Huh? Uh, well, he, he, he uses another watch or look verb. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I should go back earlier. Emblepsos, um, gazing, gazing upon Jesus. Okay. So then he watched, he was looking at Jesus and he said, Declaration. Behold the Lamb of God. Now the two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. That's vocation, right? Follow Jesus. 
Wherever you go, I'll go. Whatever you lead me into, I'll follow. I'm not going to quit. But boy, you better help me. Because, as St. Philip Neri used to say all the time, keep your hand on Philip, Lord, or Philip will betray you. I'll follow you. Boy, you've got to be there with me or I'll, I'll blow it. But that's a disciple. Somebody who follows Jesus wherever he goes. In your life, in my life. And to the cross, some act of love when we die. You know, I knew a man, a beautiful friend, a Franciscan, I've mentioned him before, a great holy mystic fellow. He had a heart attack, and he recovered. Huh. What do you know? Just reminded me of myself when I said that. Uh, and he said, you know, when I was in this, you know, semi-state, I wasn't praying. I wasn't doing anything. I was just sort of there. So I made up my mind when I'm dying, I'm going to be telling Jesus, I love you. So I practice. Every night as I'm going off to sleep, I say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. So I'm practicing. So when I die, I'll say, Jesus, I love you. And he did. The last words from his lips were, Jesus, I love you. He followed Jesus. Okay. And he was a character, I think I've mentioned before. Uh, I can quote him because it's him, but um, even though I'm on the air, I guess. Anyway, I guess today, who would care? He said, they, they, they made me, he was Irish, he made me the, the, the provincial of the whole province in Australia. You know, he said, and I didn't give a damn if the whole back end dropped off the province. <laughs> I don't care about that stuff. It's holiness that matters. Somebody has to run it, you know, get the dishes done and but he wasn't the man for the job. <clears throat> so, they turned and, Jesus turned and saw them following him. You see? Uh, you see, he, he gazed on them. There's another, there's lots of words for see in Greek, and John uses them all most of the time with slightly different nuances. So, gazing on them, following him, he said, Ti, si, ti, te. What are you looking for? They said back, because this is the challenge in a vocation, right? What are you looking for? You know? If you're looking for a... Uh, well, suppose you want to be a priest. If you want to be up there being a big shot, you're in the wrong business. That's not a priest. A priest is supposed to be like Jesus. Anyway. So they said, Rabbi, which means teacher... Where are you staying? And he said, Come. As usually translated, Come and see. I guess they still do that. No, good for them. Come and you will see. If you come, you will see. So, uh, they stayed with him. They saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day. Now, it was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of those, one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. So what did he do? He spread the good news. He went and found his own brother Simon and said, We have found the Messiah. It took just one morning. And these kids, they said, He's the Messiah. He's the one, you know, we're waiting for. There he is. Now you can see what a grace of the Holy Spirit was in them because they cut through king on a big horse coming to drive all the Romans out big shot whatever, you know? No. He's just beginning his own ministry and they just stayed with him a day and they got it. There is the apologia for a life of faith a life of prayer. Pray. Pray. You know, actually, an hour of prayer a day is like minimal equipment for survival in the chaos we live in. But it's so hard for people to do. Get a half hour in the morning before you start the day. Pray for a half hour. One of these times I'll go through that again. But you remember the four parts. What do you do at Mass? Repent, read the Word, 
praise, and uh, pray for others. That's the first four things we do when we go to Mass. Then we start the rest, the offertory. And the... So, when you wonder when you get to pray, what am I supposed to do now? Well, you see, the first thing you do is, is these four things, you see. Repent for your sins. This is not a gruesome thing. It's a gift. The Holy Spirit wants to free us of our sins. So he says, look what you did. Oh, I repent. <laughs> Done with. That's why he shows us our sin. He's not a tattletale. He's not a taskmaster. He's a lover. And then you read the Word of God. Get your Bible and read something. And say, Lord, talk to me. You know, I think I've said that when I was a professor up at Steubenville, I would tell the students, don't leave your prayer time till you've heard from the Lord. So they'd be praying away and they'd say to the Lord, look, Lord, it's 722. I got a class in the other building at, I mean, 822. I got a class in the other building at 830. Please speak, because Father Francis is going to ask me what you told me. And I would. I wanted to get used to the idea that the Lord really speaks. So, uh, we found the Messiah, Messiah. And then they brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him. See it again? See? Say? He looked. He said, you uh, are, um, brought him, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Kephas, which is the Aramaic for rock. So Petros in, in Greek. Huh? You're going to be the rock. On this rock, he'll tell them later in Matthew, I'll build my church. What did he see? He saw a guy who could give his whole heart to something. Weak and stupid. Lie, doesn't know him even at one point. But when he finally gets it, he gets it. And he can care for the brothers. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, all the disciples, the you, plural. Then I prayed for you, singular, that you, having turned, will strengthen your brothers. That's the Pope's role, strengthen the brothers. Okay, and so, uh, you see, uh, translated Peter. Okay, and so, that's the end of our gospel text. But let's think a bit about vocation. It's been the whole thing. God has a vocation. You might say, well, you know, I'm 72. I haven't found it out yet. It's all right. Start now. Part of what you did was surely part of the vocation. But what's the, what's the reason? Well, the reason is because then it's personal. Jesus Christ, the living, eternal Word of God, has told me what I'm supposed to do. Isn't that great? So you go, you try to discern, you go on retreat, you try to listen. You know, people hear vocation, oh, i got to be a nun, i got to be a priest, i got to be a nun. Use your common sense. How many people out there, great Christians, are married, for heaven's sake? Most of the Christians in the world are supposed to be married. So relax. But if he calls you to be celibate and give your whole life to him, let me tell you, after 55, oh, more than that now, 1950 to wherever we are now, 60-something years, it's worth it. You will know a happiness and a freedom that nobody can take from you. So, the motto is at the end of this Sunday, go away. And if you, you know, if you've been 35 years married, you don't have to worry about your vocation. You kind of know it. But how well are you doing in it? But if you're still looking, ask him, what's, what's my vocation? Amen.